Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. In today's video I want to announce some up-and-coming amplifier projects. The JAT 801 amp. There's a little smiley face there. I actually had to draw that there to give the camcorder something to focus on because it was just wiggling in and out of focus. But anyway, yeah, I just uh, like to uh, tinker and design little amplifier projects. You know, if you watch my channel a while, you know I've done a bunch of them. Upon completion of the JAT 501, I want to move ahead and do some other things. I was kind of disappointed, though, in the viewership of the 501 project. Like the last video, the completion, and then I did that other video of, about the constant current source in the emitter circuit of a common emitter transistor amplifier. Where'd the signal go? Well, that video is only a week old and does much better than the much older, you know, had a lot more time for people to watch it, completion of the JAT 501. So, yeah, I think I'm going to pepper in more of those type of videos since you guys seem to like to watch them. But I want to do what I want to do, like to do, and that's amplifier projects as well. So I, uh, I'm going to talk about three amplifier projects. I might have mentioned, I know on um, Patreon I mentioned the Son of Easy Amp project. I want to resurrect that project, the Easy Amp project, to get it going. Just change the design a little bit and um, make something I think you guys would like. Being an easy amp, people like more easier type things. Uh, I think a lot of people would be interested in that. This amp, the 801, which we'll talk about momentarily, it's more of a complex amp. It's a higher power amp and uh, there'll be more parts. But, you know, some people requested an amplifier with a little more grunt to it. So, yeah, that's what we'll do here. Uh, up and coming videos. Uh, I want to talk about the power supply collaboration for the 501. That's coming up, uh, not next video, but probably after that. I want to do another video beforehand about the differential amplifier. I did been doing a few of those, and there's just some neat little things I want to look at with that. Okay, anyhow, let's talk about the JAT. 801 amp. That'll be our first amplifier. This will be based on the 501, but having to operate at a higher supply voltage to give more power is going to require some changes. Um, the targets here are 125 watts into 8 ohms. And the design of the amp will be flexible, so if you want to boost the supply up to maybe uh, 55 volts or even closer to 60 plus or minus 60 120 volts total you know that way you can get over 150 watts into 8 ohms though at such a higher power I wouldn't run it with 4 ohm loads but running it at a plus or minus 50 volt supply you should be able to get around 200 watts into 4 ohms and the distortion performance and everything should be similar to the JAT 501. And to accomplish this, it's going to have a paralleled output stage. So let's take a look at the 501 circuit here. See if we can get all of that on screen at once. So yeah, this is the 501 schematic. By the way, if you downloaded the Gerber files and had boards made, uh, let me know in the comments how that turned out. And if you actually made it and populated it, powered it up and all that good stuff. But anyway, this input stage here, this differential long tail pair input stage, it's an unpretentious stage. I mean, it you can go a lot more complex, go really crazy with the design but if you look at older amplifiers you see a lot simpler designs in use with amplifiers that people seem to think are great so yeah I think this is just good enough we have uh, a constant current source 
a current mirror load and we're using degener uh, emitter degeneration resistors all around here. So yeah, it's a, a good input stage and that's going to carry over to the 801 design. Now, from that point on, the amplifier will have changes. There'll be some changes in the voltage amplification stage. And the main difference, though, will be the output stage where there'll be paralleled output transistors because of the uh, safe operating area of the transistors we have to watch out for it would be good to parallel them when delivering such high power. Next up, and this is probably the first amplifier I'll work on. The, uh, it'll be the next project I start. And it's called the Son of Easy Amp. So I took this old card here from the Easy Amp and just marked out and wrote it in Son of Easy Amp project and changed a few things here. Now this like I say, is supposed to be a pretty simple amplifier. It's not going to be as complex. I'm not going for as low as distortion values and things like that. Make it something fairly inexpensive. I'm not going to rely on the more expensive transistors. What I would like to do, if I can ever get a distortion analyzer, and I'll mention something about that at the end of the video, tweak it along the way, add parts, take away parts and see how it affects the distortion. Change the value of parts just to see how the distortion performance changes at different power levels and frequency levels. I got these darn ants. Ugh. Darn bugs. But the idea is just have enough to make it do its job and no more. Here's the schematic to the Easy Amp and here's the Easy Amp itself. The problem with this, I was using these monolithic Darlington output transistors and I'd be testing the amplifier, my usual power test, and the signal would just collapse. The, the transistors would short out. So here's the fourth pair installed. I tried to capture the event on the scope and everything. I, I didn't see any oscillation or anything. It would just fail. So I put the force set in and made it into a video and of course it didn't blow up. It went through the test just fine. But I lost confidence in using these Darlington. So I'm going to use a discrete output stage. Go back to a driver and output stage. So uh, what I'm going to do is start simple. I'm going to take away the constant current source, take away the emitter generation. I think I'm probably going to end up having to use those in the input stage. Or the distortion will just be too much. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. And make an amplifier that's pretty simple and doesn't require expensive parts. Uh, hopefully get around... I think uh, in, in the test of the Easy Amp, that last board I just showed right here, I was getting around 40 watts into 8 ohms. I have to go back and look at the video. I don't remember. And more like 70 watts into 4. And we'll operate around plus or minus 30 volt supply. I don't know how the distortion figure is going to turn out here. It'll probably be not as good as this depending on uh, the components I put in. So yeah, that's the Son of Easy Amp project. Oh, I should also mention I'd like to make a even simpler version of this amp. A lower voltage, simpler version. And I'll do some things to maximize the output swing since it is going to operate on a lower voltage. You might say just use a chip amp. Now, what's the fun in that? I want to design a little amp that some people might want to use. Yeah, it might be a 25 watt amp into 4 ohms, something like that. Maybe even less. That'll be kind of a side spin off project to this. Last but not least is the JAT 501H amp. So, what is this all about? It's the hot rodded version of the 501. What do I mean by that? Well, I want to provide more power for people who have 8-ohm speakers. 
Well, you can just turn up the supply voltage a bit, but there's some modifications that need to be done to the amp before you do that. If you want to operate it in the plus minus 42 volt range instead of the plus minus 35 volts, I wouldn't recommend using it at 4 ohms at a higher supply voltage because you're stressing the output transistors more. But if you have 6 or 8 ohm speakers and you want something with a little more power, we can hot rod the JAT501. So this probably would be a simple one video project. I do some mods and crank up the power a little bit. So right now the 501 is, depending on your supply, you'll get 50 to 60 watts into 8 ohm loads, um, maybe a little over 100 into 4 ohm loads. But with the 501H, with 8 ohm loads, you might be able to get around 80 watts, 6 ohm, maybe around 100. And again, you don't want to use 4 ohm loads with that. That's what the 801 amp's going to be about. So there you go. That's what I'm thinking of doing here as far as amplifier projects. Now these videos won't be strung out over years like the 501 project was. You know, I don't want to go through the design process again because, you know, everything's quite similar. So these will be done in much less videos. Like this one probably be just one video and the 801, I don't know, four or five videos. Easy amp will probably be two or three videos. We'll let it roll, see how it works out. I have my sights on this Quantasylum 403 audio analyzer. Neat bit of kit. Connect it to your computer and it has software. And you can run tests on amplifiers, check the distortion performance and intermodulation, all that good stuff. But just like quite a bit of companies, they're having issues in the supply chain of some of the parts they need to build this thing. So I've been saving a little bit of my Patreon support money. Hopefully I can buy one of these things at some point. You really need something like this when you're testing an amplifier. You know, changing parts, modifying it, and running a distortion performance test. See how the adjustment affects the distortion. And, you know, tweak it so you can get the lowest distortion. And this thing, you know, it seems like it might be kind of expensive. But, you know, they have $30,000 audio analyzers. So for what this thing can do, it's actually a pretty good bargain. It's just, when will they be available again? Well, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for more. I have to push away some of the stuff on the messy bench here to make some more videos get room for some projects and I'm working on some right now so we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching